Okay, class, today we're talking about making inferences from a random sample. Okay, so inferences are just predictions, and you've heard that in your reading language arts class. Okay, so an inference is a prediction. Okay, now I put a note here at the bottom of your foldable. It says a random sample has a good chance of being representative of the population. Okay, and we all know that a random sample, it gives everybody that chance. Okay, and it says you can use data from the sample and proportional reasoning to make inferences or predictions about the population. So that proportional relationship means we're going to eventually have to set up a proportion in order to solve the problem. Okay, so let's go over here on the inside here. So now we're going to make inferences from a random sample. So the question says, what can you infer? And I highlight that and put predict. What can you predict about the population from each data set represented below? Okay, so first we're gonna look at this dot plot. Okay, and it's the number of concerts attended. So we're just going to look at this dot plot visually and see what, what we can infer here, okay? So I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna let you talk to your partner really fast to see what do you notice about this dot plot. Okay, one thing that we can infer here is that uh, the median, which is the middle number, and the mode are both 11. So now we know that mode is the one that occurs the most often. So if I look here, I have more under 11 concerts attended. Okay, so if I were to find the median or the middle number, I could do this one or two ways. I can list my data out and mark off one from the beginning to the end. I can do the same thing here. I can say, we can start at the beginning and just mark off. So my middle number would be 11, okay? That's how you would find the median if you don't list them out. So we're gonna write that here. We're gonna say the median and the mode and excuse me and the mode are both 11 concerts attended okay so that's one thing we can say about this we can infer Okay, so one more thing, let's see here. Let's see, where does most of our data lie? Okay, most of our data lies between 10 and 13. So that's another thing we can infer. So we're gonna write that here. We're gonna say most data or most concerts attended, because we're talking about concerts. So most concerts attended, are between 10 and 13, okay? Now, one more thing that you guys should have discussed is this eight here, okay? Eight is what we call the outlier, okay? It's not used in computing the average concerts of attendance, but it is that outlier. So eight is the outlier. Okay, so we just inferred three things about this dot plot here. The median and the mode are 11 concerts attended, and most concerts attended are between 10 and 13, meaning most of our data lies between 10 and 13, and eight is the outlier, which is all by itself. Okay, so now, moving on to our box plot. So I'm gonna pause here, and I'm gonna give you and your partner a chance to talk about what you can infer about this box plot. Okay, so before we talk about um, what can we infer, infer, I labeled here what our minimum is, of my data, my maximum, 
my upper quartile, which is the, uh, excuse me, this is switched. I did switch those. This is supposed to be upper quartile, and this is the lower quartile. Sorry about that. I got them mixed up. This is my lower quartile. This is my upper quartile. My median is the line in the middle of the box, and my inner quartile range is the box, which is where most of my data lies, okay? So now, what you should have discussed is, we know for sure that the median of my data is six, meaning, and, and not just six, you can't just say the median is six. So we can say the median is six miles jog daily. So that's the first thing we're gonna say here. We're gonna say the median is six miles jogged daily. Okay, that's my first thing I can say. Okay, so what can we say about the ranges? And we know the range is the, that, the whole set of data. So I'm gonna take my minimum and my maximum. So my maximum here is 8.5, okay? So I can say, the second thing I can say is the miles jogged daily ranges from three to 8.5 miles, but typically falls between excuse me, typically falls within the ranges of, okay, and that's gonna be my inner quartile range, so 5.5 .5 and 7.5. 5.5 miles and 7.5 miles which is my IQR or my inner quartile range, okay? So those are the two things that I can infer about this box plot. And excuse me, I'm sorry again for mixing up. I wrote them in the wrong place, okay? This is my lower quartile, this is my upper quartile, okay? So the median is six, the miles jog daily ranges from three to 8.5, and but most, but typically most of the data falls in between 5.5 and 7.5, okay? All right, so now we're gonna move on over and we're gonna use, we're gonna solve using proportions to make inferences, okay? So let's read our scenario here. A band has sold out a concert with 4,200 seats. A random sample of 120 ticket buyers is surveyed. So my population is 120 ticket buyers. And 28 buyers made their purchase on the first day tickets were being sold. How many of the 4,200 tickets are likely to have been purchased on the first day? Okay, so we're gonna write a proportion to solve this. Okay, so a random sample of 120 ticket buyers. So that's my whole, that's my population. Now what's my sample, okay, of that 120, which would have been 28. So buyers to total ticket sold, okay? Now, how many of the 4,200 tickets are likely to have been purchased? So the total, There's 4,200, so we're trying to figure out how many that is. So now I want you and your partner to go ahead and try to figure out how many tickets were purchased on the first day that were available. Okay, so what you should have gotten here was based on the sample, X equals 190 tickets that were purchased on the first day that tickets were available. Okay, so all I did was just set this up as a proportion. I did... Uh, part to whole, which is the sample. 
out of the total number of buyers, okay, X over total amount of tickets. So part the total, okay? All right. Now, here we have another scenario of seventh grade um, student. I want you and your partner to read the scenario and I want you to set up the proportion and I want you to solve it. Now the question is asking you, is this student correct? And you need to explain, okay? Okay, so let's first read this example here. A seventh grade student chooses a random sample of 50 out of 400. So right there we know we're talking about a, a ratio. He finds that seven students have traveled outside the United States. The student claims that over 50 of those 400 students were likely have likely traveled outside the United States. Is this student correct? Okay, so now, my answer is going to be yes or no, and why? All right, so now, he finds that seven out of the students, seven out of those 50, okay? So seven out of 50 have traveled out of the United States, okay? So he, he's saying that out of those 400, let's see here. So we're trying to figure out if he is correct. All right, so it's 7 over 50 equals X over 100. So right now, I want you to talk with your partner and see how do we solve this. Okay, you and your partner should have seen here a constant rate. Okay, so if from, how do I get from 50 to 400? I can just multiply times 8, multiply this times 8, and I get 56. Okay, so this student claims that over 50 of the 400 traveled outside of the United States. Is this student correct? So yes, because X is 56 and it's more than 50. So yes, he is correct because 56 is greater than 50. Okay, so we just did making inferences from a random sample or making predictions from a random sample.